Hello, I'm Eliana Pina from Thomas Jefferson University, and I am here in Chicago at the sessions of the American Heart Association. This is our first real live session, even though there's a virtual component to it, which then brings me to my guest, Dr. Alex Mabaza. I've known Alex now for several years. We won't say how many. Um, <laughs> and we have been working across the pond with very, very similar ideas about what to do when the patients are in the hospital with acute decompensated heart failure. We even have a paper about that. And then what happens when that patient leaves the hospital? That transition of care, which we in the United States don't do a great job on. Alex has been thinking a lot about this, as many of us have. So Alex, go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we'll get right into your study. I confirm that I know uh, Professor Pina since a few years, <laughs> <laughs> to not say many. Uh, I am professor of uh, intensive care in uh, University of Paris. I've been hearing about you having this strong study, uh, and it's something that you thought a lot about and how you constructed it. Tell our audience what the study has been now that you're completed and have data. The, the initial idea is exactly like you said, is I think you, me, and others we were really sad to see patients coming back again and again for acute decompensated heart failure. And when you open the chart, you see that they are not fully treated. And, and I think for us specialists, we clearly see the relationship between the fact that they are not well treated and the fact that they are coming again and again and again. And, and really the initial idea was why if, if I, someone has a cancer and goes to the oncologist, and the guy would say, we are Friday, you come Wednesday, and Wednesday I give you a full dose of chemotherapy, mm -hmm. and I give you a small card in case you have a side effect, fever, etc., mm -hmm. and we take care of this. Yeah. And I thought, but why, uh, heart trailer, we don't have the same idea. The concept is very similar, actually. Exactly. Right? And, and, and chemotherapy has also side effects like uh, beta blocker, ACE inhibitor, mm -hmm. or, or, or other. And, and then we designed exactly the study like this, we also learned from guided. I have, I mean, uh, I would say it many times. We I'm glad it. we taught you something <laughs> from guided. <laughs> we learned it from guided because um, uh, guided, the, the one of the issue, and you know very well, is that the two <coughs> arms were run in parallel by the same investigators, and and it is really difficult for an investigator to do one thing the same day to one patient and different thing right, to, right. to another, and, and and this reason why. The usual care in, in uh, strong HF, the usual care was really the usual care that we were doing before, which is the patient is doing an acute heart failure. Before being discharged, you write a report, you send it to the cardiologist in town, and the, and the patient is followed by the cardiologist in, in town. In the high-intensity uh, care arm, before being discharged, we were giving half of the optimal dose of three classes of drug, RAS inhibitor, beta blocker and spironolactone, then really combining the three at half of the dose. And then we were seeing the patient three weeks in the row. So once I go home, when is the first visit? If, if, patient? if for example, uh, the patient is leaving a Wednesday, it's really easy. Then the nurse would say, the three, co the three coming Wednesday, you come back to, to our outpatient center. Okay. First visit, v visit week one, we are going just to check that the three drugs given at the half dose but combined, they were safe. So you're okay. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the okay is not shaking hands. We, we put a procedure that needs to be followed. And this procedure is, is combining one clinical exam, heart rate, blood pressure, edema, mm -hmm. and biological exam with four uh, components, uh, antipro BNP, potassium, creatinine and hemoglobin. And in fact, the way we, we design it is more or less easy. They come to the outpatient center in, early in the morning. Biology, I mean, they, we withdraw the blood. We go to, uh, to the biological lab. The results comes, and then the patient enters in the uh, So the, the patient box. gets seen with the labs already there. Exactly. In your hand. Okay. exactly. You see? And then, then week one, we check everything is fine. Then we say, okay, we hope to see you next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, he comes, and this is an important uh, visit, the visit of week two, because we are going to go from half of three drugs to full of the three drugs. And it's important to really well understand it's the full dose of the three drugs. And how are we going to give the green light 
for those three drugs is by looking at all the parameters I, I was telling you earlier. If, for, for instance, there is uh, everything is fine, then we go to full dose. Week three, we check safety, and then we see him back only at week six and 90 days for, for, the, uh, for the trial. But if one of the parameters is red, let's say heart rate is, is down, then no, no problem, because we may increase the two others. And we, leave that one as it exactly, is. Exactly. And then at, at week three, we will check. Okay. Maybe the heart rate will increase. Maybe it will stay like this. Then it means that he needs only half of the dose. Okay. You see? And, and, and really, the procedure is rather easy. A another question that is often asked is, but how do you do if after half of the dose of beta blocker, anti-proBNP goes up? No, it's easy. We, we told the investigators, you give diuretics for one week, you wait for the anti-proBNP to So you're to treating come down. that anti-proBNP as volume. Exactly, okay. as a congestion. In fact, in guided, anti-proBNP was used as like a target mm -hmm. of therapies. Mm -hmm. Here we are using anti-proBNP as a security net. Mm -hmm. Anti-proBNP, we know it. I mean, you, you, you studied this, we studied this. Anti-proBNP, when you are discharged from hospital, should only go down slowly, slowly. That's exactly slowly. right. If anti-proBNP stays stable or increases, there is a red signal, clearly a red signal. Then what we say is don't touch the drug. Give, let the patient under half of the beta blocker. Give diuretics for one week. Does the patient get examined in that visit? Yeah. For, so for you every can pick visit, up you have exactly JVP the same exam. and congestion yeah. and everything exactly. else. Exactly. And, and, and then this is the procedure. It's easy. It, I mean, I guess it makes sense. But the big advantage is uh, that we, we could in week two, for most of those patients, we could really... Uh, when does CSGLT2 come in? It's a, it's a very good question. Uh, when we started the study five years ago, SGLT2 was uh, well, not, not recommended, yeah, yeah. and then we, we started. But when we did the amendment two years ago, we said that two uh, agents uh, should be giving uh, based on the local uh, habits and recommendations. One is SGLT2. You said, hey, guys, go ahead. You add it. It's not part of the procedure. And they can add it at any time. When, whenever, whenever they want. They want. Okay. And two is iron supplementation. What was your endpoint? The endpoint was 180 days. Okay. Heart failure readmission. Okay. And death or, or death. Or death. So first event, time to first exactly. event. Okay, keep going. And then the SMB called and I said, we, and even they wrote us a letter. They said we have two issue. One, the difference between the for the primary endpoint, the the, the, the difference between the two arms is exceeding all what was expected. Wow. And, and this is even going through COVID. Exactly. Because you went through COVID. It, and, 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 and the Lancet paper, you will see that even if you remove the patients who died from COVID, the results is even uh, larger. And the second thing they said, and it's really very interesting, I think, for as a trialist, they said it's unethical to keep patients in the usual care. But, but here it's... That's it's, a big, that's a big uh, say. Yeah, it's a big say, exactly. It's a big say because, in fact, usual care is the patients all around the world. Yeah, it could be but, anybody. But in fact, the SMB just wrote a letter that could be in the <laughs> New York Times. So Every heart failure patient in the world. What are you going to tell ethical. your docs in Paris? Does it have to be a cardiologist? Does it have to be a heart failure person? Who can actually do this in the community? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's a very good question because indeed the, the first comment is, but Alex, how are we going to have uh, cardiologists, even the same cardiologist, which I didn't say, but they may say, the same cardiologist having four visits, three in the row, and then the visit uh, at, uh, at week six. My, my advice is first, for heart failure patients, how many times you see a heart failure patient over a year, a chronic heart failure patient? How, how many times? Three, um, four times? I see them more often than that, but that's us. L let's say three yeah. or four times. Yeah, at least. At that's least what I'm saying times. is those three or four times that you are giving you are giving like uh, um, some dates, but with, without knowing exactly why six months, why three months, why four months. Why, why don't we concentrate this at discharge from a heart failure? Because when a patient Makes sense. Is, is doing a decompensated heart failure, this means that in the years before, we, we didn't do the right job. Then Something went wrong. Exactly. Then let's use this acute decompensated yeah. like beginning of a second life. Instead of having uh, maybe several appointments, let's put them three together, we optimize, and, and then already the, it means that the heart failure clinics needs to be seen differently. 
And the, and the next point is, should we have a cardiologist for all the exams? For the protocol, uh, we needed to have a heart failure specialist to well, really to do the, the trial, part. you needed to do it this However, way. However, I, I think everybody would agree it needs to be tested. Probably that visit one and three can be done by nurses, can be done remotely. The pharmacists in the United States are Pharmacists, very powerful, you see. Yeah. And, and visit two is the most important. But, but the rest, I mean... Could, that's that's the biggie that visit to uh, yeah visit to really sounds where make you make sure, your decisions exactly and in, in the Lancet paper really we explain a few tricks there is one point I would like to mention is the ejection fraction we uh, as you all know and we publish this so much all around the world acute heart failure is half reduced ejection fraction and half half, half, half. half yes. PEF, exactly yeah. and and we included those patients the results was. As good. You didn't make any difference between injection fractions. Exactly. And the results was positive in, in, in those two. And, and this is also very, very helpful. But when we designed the trial, the steering, the steering committee was really very helpful. And I used to say we had a really a, a strong HF dream team. And, and all, all of them were co our co authors of the paper. I'm very happy. Well, and, I congratulate you uh, wonderfully. And I want to thank you for taking the time. I know this is a busy meeting. When are you returning to Paris? Uh, later this afternoon. Oh, we are <laughs> back this afternoon. So I want to thank Dr. Mabaza for joining me today. And um, I urge all of you to take a look at the paper. I think more importantly, also, I urge you to don't wait three weeks to see a patient when you send them home. We should be seeing them within the first two weeks because bad things happen and they happen very quickly. That 30-day readmission rate isn't really 30. It's more like two weeks when they start to decompensate and get bad again. So get your patients back in again, even if you do a brief visit, even if you do a short visit, see how they're doing, get the drugs on board before they walk out the door, uh, and then keep up titrating. Remember that I always say in heart failure, stability is an illusion. There's no such thing. Have a great day. Thank you for joining me today.